money and spirituality. How do we think about these two concepts together? In this video, I'll share with you three different views of it, and I'd love to know which view resonates more with you, or if you have a, even a different view uh, than, than these three. So the first view comes from traditional religion, um, Christianity, Buddhism, uh, Hinduism, maybe other religions believe this too, which is the sense that money is to be seen suspiciously. And if you look at the saints of most traditional religions, they are almost always poor. And there's a, there's a, a sort of uh, putting poverty on a pedestal. Now, to be honest, I am sympathetic towards this view. It's not my view now, but I'm sympathetic towards it because I understand that money for us humans signifies security and power prestige, pleasure, because that money can get us these things, especially now in the modern world. And so when you put a human being in front of the possibility of getting security and prestige and pleasure and power, it's easy to corrupt that human being uh, into making decisions and doing things that are not, uh, you know, really for the, for the greater good, right, that, that are more selfish. So money tends to make people selfish, is the more traditional view, and um, you know this is why there's that that old saying that money is the root of all evil, which by the way is actually a misquote. In the Bible, First Timothy, it actually says money is the root of all kinds of evil, not the root of all evil, just the root of all kinds of evil. It makes sense. Yeah, money causes a lot of problems causes a lot of greed or corruption, etc. So that's the first view, um, that poverty tends to be better for spirituality than, than a rich person. And Jesus says, of course, it's easier to, for, for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than, than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. So, so however you want to interpret those, those, those verses, that's the traditional view, right? Less money tends to be more spiritual. The second view is much more modern, and it uh, comes from, it's been popularized by the Law of Attraction, and T. Harv Ecker, and like Joel Olstein and some, some preachers. But it's this idea of using spirituality, quote unquote spirituality, to get more, to get more money, to get wealth. Uh, you may have heard of the abundance mindset, as this idea that if you are spiritual the spiritual practice in this view is to think abundantly and to see yourself in possession of whatever you want um, and so they call that spirituality right they and I, I think it's an unfortunate equation of calling spirituality these kinds of um, possession getting practices I think is really unfortunate but uh, but I can see what they mean in that they call it spirituality because it's sort of like starting with your mind and with your emotions, starting with the inner resources to manifest the outer resources. And the, 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 the drawback of this idea uh, that some people make the mistake of thinking, well, if I don't have money, that must mean I'm not spiritual enough. Because if I were truly spiritual, if I were truly connected to the inner resource and the ability to manifest, then I could have anything I want, right? So anyway, let me know what you think of the second view. The third view, which um, is sort of trying to find a, a higher or, or, a, or a middle way maybe, is that whether you are poor or rich, you can be spiritual or practice your spirituality now, unattached from how much is in your bank account and how many possessions you have. So. In other words, a poor person can pursue their spirituality with integrity just as a rich person can pursue their spirituality with integrity and, and with depth. And so it's not about the actual quantity of money because, again, what's poor and what's rich, right? Um, it's, it's about the connection to the divine source and in your, in the integrity of your spiritual path now regardless of how much money you have. And so in this third view, which you could probably tell is the one that I subscribe to at this time, uh, 
the idea is that no matter what your money situation is, know that you will be taken care of by your divine caretaker, however you think of that, God, the universe, life, the greater community, you will be taken care of no matter what. And therefore, you can go as deep into your spirituality as possible so that you can find what's truly meaningful and, and loving and joyful in life by practicing your spirituality no matter how much or how little money you have. That's point number one. Point number two is if you are practicing your spirituality, which is, I think, true spirituality is a profound sense of well-being or produces a profound sense of well-being, that then allows you to serve more generously toward others and to connect more um, heart to heart with other people. And when you connect heart to heart with other people and truly serve them in a way that's meaningful for them, what becomes natural is that they reciprocate. That's what we human beings do. And so that is why if you are willing to truly plumb the depths, to really go into your spiritual path and experience that sense of well-being, and then from there, you truly serve others meaningfully and connect with others generously and heart to heart, you will tend to be taken care of. You will tend to have enough. And another part of, I think, spirituality is, again, finding that sense of inner well-being is gratitude for what you do have and remembering again and again, moment by moment, that you will always be taken care of. I hope this is encouraging for you and I look forward to uh, seeing what your comments are and how you relate money and spirituality.